welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Before I get started, I should mention I probably sound a little bit odd. That's because I am fighting a cold right now. Yay for January. Anyway, uh, as, as, as most of you know, I am covering the prom night movies this month. And tonight's movie came out in 1989, and it is called Prom Night 3, The Last Kiss. I'm watching it by way of this uh, double feature, which also comes with Prom Night 4. Uh, the funny thing is, Prom Night 3, unlike Prom Night 2, actually has continuity that carries over from the previous film. Uh, a lot of people have already sent in messages, and yes, I do know that Prom Night 2 originally started off as a totally un unrelated film, and the studio just tacked on the, the, the Prom Night name in hopes of uh, milking a few extra cents. Well, this one actually is a carryover from Prom Night 2, which uh, may or may not be a good thing, because even though Prom Night 2 was better than the first one by leaps and bounds, it was still kind of shitty. So, I don't know if this is going to improve on that, or if this is just going to bottom out and make it worse, but there is only one way to find out. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Prom Night 3, The Last Kiss. Wow. Have a nice day. That is by far the bitchiest guidance counselor I've ever seen at any high school ever. Perhaps maybe it's because when I... Well, maybe it's because when I was in school, we had competent and rather good gui guidance counselors. But my God, she was fucking awful. And, well, it doesn't help also that the acting was shit, but the character herself was a fucking bitch, too. Okay, this is really beginning to bother me. I've heard this piece of music from somewhere. But damn it, I can't place it. It's starting to drive me nuts. It's really sad that I am trying to identify the music because the movie's not giving me much to fucking work with, guys. Okay, I think I've run into a problem here. That is like the seventh time I've seen swearing either censored or covered up, really poorly covered up. I have this weird feeling that this fucking DVD is not the uncut version of this movie. Because there's no way something this clean would ever be would ever be rated R. Even e, I mean I mean even the gore isn't bad enough for for, for a fucking R. I don't know what to say. I did not... Wow. I never thought I would hear the phrase sexual haunting in any movie ever. Well, at least Prom Night 3 has now allowed me to hear, to hear that phrase. Now, I guess I can die happy. Who the fuck writes the words sexual haunting and thinks, yep, this is awesome shit. Wow, that is just so cheesy, but so lovable, too. It's actually kind of funny. Did Alex's dad just say he was going to get a gun? His son just had, like, the longest shotgun I've ever fucking seen, which apparently he was going to use to shoot a ghost. Yeah, I know, makes no fucking sense at all. Technically, you had a you had a gun, and unless the police are taking it as fucking evidence, you still have a gun, dipshit. And even then, what the fuck? What the fuck is that going to do if the if the police take him? Do you want to be arrested too, dude? I'm sorry, guys. I guess I kind of like a little logic in my fucking movies. You know what I mean? Okay, once more, Alex has a gun while hunting a ghost, dude. It's a ghost. I don't think bullets are going to do anything to it. If the writers in this thing were just a little bit better, they would fucking understand this point. I kind of thought it was an obvious thing. Bullets don't do shit to ghosts. Again, I thought that was common knowledge. I guess I was wrong. Wow, that ending was a piece of shit. Well, guys, that was Prom Night 3, The Last Kiss. I'm going to shut that shit off right now. Now, before I get into the review itself, I do have to mention, and uh, some of you who are really antsy and love to post comments before you finish watching these, which, by the way, you shouldn't be doing that, um, 
may have already posted this. Because um, I, I looked this up as the movie was going. There was really nothing else going on. Uh, yeah, the version of Prom Night 3, which is on this double feature set, is the edited for television version. So, when I mention that, it probably was. Yeah, it totally is. And um, I have to say that the people over at Artisan Home Entertainment need to be fucking ashamed. You do not sell a DVD that claims to be the uncut, R-rated version of a movie and then give us the watered-down, half-assed, made for, or rather, edited-for-television version. Um, however, at least now I can tell you approximately how much stuff was cut, because... Uh, this, because according to my laptop here, this movie has a runtime of 95 minutes. The back of this thing says 97. So that means that when they were editing Prop Night 3 for television, they cut two minutes. And unless those are the two greatest minutes ever committed to film, um, it's still not going to help the fact that this movie is a little bit on the sub on, on the subpar side. I want to talk about writing now. Now that I finally explained that, I want to get into the review. Let's talk about writing. And I'm going to say that the story here, the actual premise, the story, was fantastic. And it would probably have been great if it were done competently. Um, however, there are, there are a lot of points here, guys, where the writing just falls. Uh, it, could be, it could be the fact that they were trying way too hard to, to try to shoehorn in all of the bullshit that ties this into Prom Night 2. Um, maybe it is just the fact that if perhaps maybe the jokes were done a little bit better, yes, guys, this one is supposed to be a horror, a horror comedy, and some of the jokes are actually funny. A couple of them made me, made me actually laugh, uh, but most of them didn't. Most of them were rather cheap, cheap, stupid jokes that I don't think would have made anybody laugh. But, so, we have, so we have... So everything here, guys, is hit and miss in terms of writing. We have certain scenes that are really good in terms of, you know, like horror movies, this and that. Uh, we have some jokes that really work, but then most of it doesn't. It's like you sit there, you watch, it's like the, you know, like death scenes, at least what I got to see on this DVD, were pretty good. Uh... However, a whole, however, a whole lot of, however, like a whole lot of the angsty bullshit between Alex and his fucking girlfriend didn't need to be there. It felt really forced and shoehorned in just basically to give him some kind of fucking conflict before he runs into Mary Lou. It felt really forced, really shitty, and I'd rather not talk about it. Um, humor, I've, I've already covered humor, and really, guys, uh, if. They would have gotten better writers on this thing, and maybe if they didn't need to, you know, have that have that connection to Prom Night and just try to make it its own separate film, uh, it might have been good. Yes, if this thing had cut all of the Prom Night references, and if it had better writing, if it had tighter writing, this movie would have been amazing, at least in terms of writing and story, because we have an awesome premise. For those of you who don't know what the premise is, um, Mary Lou is back once more, and this time she is in love with a Hamilton High student. Instead of wanting to kill all the former Hamilton High students who watched her die at the prom. Uh, this time around, she's in love with a high school student. And she's killing every she's killing anyone who stands in Alex's way. Alex is the student. So she kills a science teacher, and she kills the captain of the football team, and she kills the guidance counselor. And it gets kind of funny at times. It really does get sort of interesting. Um, and that is, and that right there is why I was sort of shocked when I heard the phrase sexual haunting because Alex is apparently looking up how to deal with this. And there's a book that mentions that the only way to stop a sexual haunting is with a fucking exorcism. Why, why he then did not immediately go, go and find a priest is anybody's guess. However, I'm going to once more chalk it up to the shitty writing in this, which also is why he thinks he can kill ghosts with guns. And why his girlfriend Sarah thinks she can kill ghosts with guns in hell. It doesn't work. Anyway. Um, so we have here a story which is really good. However, it is hobbled by really poor, poor execution. Really bad, bad writing at times. Uh, the story... So basically, guys, the story, is, the story is great, but the writing fails to live up to the awesome expectations which the story sets. Now, this really isn't helped by the acting. The acting is ridiculously wooden and dead. However, I will say that in certain cases, that dead, lifeless acting enhances the humor, which, um, 
at least in terms of the cops, because every because every single cop in this film essentially is either playing really, really bored, really, really whiny, or trying to sound like Jack Webb from fucking drag from, from fucking dragnet. And all three of those come off as sort of funny. It really kinda works. And when they have and when they have humorous bits, it will it will make you at least smile, because it's just it just feels so awkward and stupid without being absolutely retarded. So I kind of have to grant it a little bit of, you know, coolness from that. So we have acting, which is really lifeless. So, okay, also this movie would, would have been better if we had decent, you know, decent acting, all right? So if we had competent writing, decent acting, this movie would have been great. <laughs> so um, acting is kind of lifeless. All right, effects. I will say this film has, at least, again, based on the edited for television version, uh, the, you know, gore effects which are there are, are pretty good. The gore effects are actually sort of, sort of passable um, at times. Well, no, 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 I will say. Gore, gore and blood are done really well. It's everything else which is done for shit. Example, at one point, Sarah is able to fashion a flamethrower in about four seconds, and when she shoots it, you can see this very clear seam where the shot of the flame was cut off by the by the bottom of the frame it was filmed in. And so then when they try to f put it on there, instead of lowering lowering the flame e enough so that way then it's cut off by the bottom of the film's frame, you have this big gaping gap about yay big at the bottom at the fucking at the fucking bottom of the screen. That is. Mind you, that there's like yay big based on my laptop size. So it's so so if you see this on a larger TV, it's gonna be even more noticeable. And um, so yeah, uh, that so basically, if it was not blood or gore, it was done poorly. Because uh, almost everything else is all just fucking you know like lighting effects, like digital fucking lighting effects, which are supposed to show that Mary Lou is evil and spectral and has powers, and it doesn't work. Except for the lightning effects, I will say that lightning effects are done competently. Um, so, what else is there to cover? Music. At one point, I uh, mentioned that that there was a piece of music. It sounded really familiar. It pops up a second time in the movie, and then that's when it hit me. It's it's a piece of music that sounds a lot like it sounds a lot like the Reanimator theme, which. Uh, which unfortunately did, did did not make me want to finish watching this movie. It made me want to go and watch my DVD of fucking a fucking Reanimator and all in in all fucking honesty. But then again, that's because Reanimator's good. This thing is really fucking disappointing. Um, music, otherwise, it's basically just this bland mix of really really shitty shitty sounding stock fucking music and god awful rap like like fucking like rap songs. In fact, here guys, allow me to unpause this again. Do you hear this shitty little rap music here? I believe this. I believe this is the second time this god awful song pop pops up. That is garbage. I'm not even going to lie. That sucks. Okay. So I've covered sound, covered that. Can I recommend this in any way at all? Kind of. I really have to I really have to explain. If you are able to look past the faults and the flaws and you just want to try to hunt for those shimmering bits, bits of awesome in this movie, then yeah, go right ahead. Give it a watch. It probably it will probably be amazing to you. However, if you if you try to watch this thing for the story, you're going to be ridiculously let 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 down. Why? Because there is no story. Well, there's barely any story. Or correction, there is, but it's but it's written so fucking poorly, you probably won't even notice it. Oh, there is one more thing I do have to mention, which is also an absolutely unforgivable sin on the part of artisan home entertainment. The final, like, ten minutes of, of this movie, you can clearly tell that they not only just basically took a VHS copy of this thing and just transferred it onto a DVD, but it wasn't even a good VHS copy because apparently that tape was sort of, was, uh, sort of mangled around the last ten minutes. So you see all of these various little fucking, you know, like, wrinkles and other little friggin', little fucking, you know, like, distortions, which come from having a shitty tape in your VCR. Um, 
they could not be asked to fix that, but of course, since they couldn't even be asked to give us the fucking theatrical cut, I guess that I guess that, that should have been kind of understandable. One other thing, if you can find a version of Prom Night 3 that is not the edited for television version, you might have a little bit of a better time, just because I guess then it would feel a little bit more honest and pure, I guess. I'm one of these people I'm absolutely against editing movies for any... I mean, editing fucking movies for TV or for fucking moral, moral reasons or any of this other stupid bullshit... So the fact that Artisan Home Entertainment decided to put this son of a bitch out as is, is fucking disgusting. So, if you guys are just looking for, you know, like, a bad, a bad movie to laugh at, go right ahead, Prom Night, and, and Prom Night 3 will probably be a, you know, good one for you. However, if you are looking for a good horror comedy, uh, I have got a fucking laundry fucking list a mile long of good ones. Uh, so... This thing, honestly, is not even close to a fucking option, then. Now, Prom Night 3 The Last Kiss came off the Amazon wish list. Wow, that almost rhymed. That sounded really weird. The person who sent it in is the person who sent in all the Prom Night movies for this month. Kari! And you can find her YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash Firefox Kari. And Kari, well, thank you. I... It's really sad to say that... So far, Prom Night 3 is probably the strongest entry in the series. I kind of have doubts about Prom Night 4 here, but I will find that out when I cover it later this later this month. Yeah, it is really sad that Prom Night that, you know, that, you know, Prom Night 3 with all of its problems is the strongest entry in the series. And I'm saying that based off of the edited for television version. That's kind of sad. But that also shows you just how shit this whole this whole franchise is, I guess. But hey, who knows? Perhaps maybe, just maybe, Prom Night 4 will come out and just fucking surprise the shit out of me. I kind of have my doubts, but I'm at least hoping for it to be watchable. So, who knows? Just maybe. And with that, folks, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.